Welcome back, this is part 3 of the animation series. In this video I'll be doing a new character animation from scratch using Adobe's Animate software and walking you through the process step by step. I've decided that the subject of the animation will be a boxer throwing a punch. Uh, now if it was just a quick jab then there wouldn't be much to it, pretty boring, so I'm gonna go with something like a right straight to get more body movement into it. Exactly what kind of a boxer character it will be, I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. So I'll start off with this new blank document here and doing a frame by frame sketch animation of the action I'm looking for. I'm thinking it will be something like three frames, so a neutral pose, an anticipation pose and the extended punch pose. Let's see how it goes. Now once again it will be a sketch so it'll look very messy and not detailed at first. Okay, let's go. Okay, I think that's about it. We have a pretty nice action going on. The character stays about the same size all the time and stays in place quite well. Now I would do a recovery frame as well, like a separate fourth drawing for the uh, going back to neutral phase, but I'm thinking I can probably just use this a neutral frame and the extended punch frame and kind of just work with those, don't have to do a forced drawing. So the next step is going to be about the timing. So right now I just have three frames all mashed up together but I'm gonna space them out a bit and see how the timing is. So first we have, let's give it a nice 20 frames of neutral then the anticipation maybe for five frames and the extended punch for 10 frames and then going back to neutral. Okay, let's see how that plays out in 60 frames per second. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good first try. So the next step is going to be uh, drawing the body parts separately into separate layers so that you get much more fluidity in your animation when you can move the body parts independently by tweening. Might sound a bit confusing at first, but you'll see what I mean when I get to it.
okay I've just finished drawing the character in the nitro pose ended up being quite a simplistic character and let me just show you real quick about these body parts and them being on independent layers how this works so for example here over at the bottom is layer 8 it includes only the character's right leg or left from our point of view and if I move it around you can see I drew a little bit extra so not just cutting the drawing off here at the pants line but also so the leg goes a little bit up and even though it's invisible right now it's going to be helpful when I start moving this and twinning these different parts around to have a little bit of uh, wiggle room and yeah just the order of the layers is super important here I haven't named them if I really went through the extra effort I would have named them like head and torso and stuff but I think I'll be able to keep track of them like this so at the very top layer layer number six right now is the character's right forearm and this is exactly how it's supposed to be since that's like nearest to us as the viewer and the layer with the head for example it is under this forearm layer but also uh, let me just turn this invisible for a bit so it's also uh, on top of the torso layer so just organize the layers in a sensible uh, way like this so that's the first pose and I guess I'll just go for the second pose right now Alright, all done with the second pose, the anticipation. I ended up reusing the left and right leg drawings for this pose as well from the first pose. And that's a nice thing about this style of animation is you don't necessarily have to redraw everything every single time that the pose changes. You can reuse the same assets. But I think for the third pose I have to redraw everything since it's quite dramatically different from the anticipation pose. Alright, let's go. Okay, with all the poses done, I can now delete the sketch from underneath, so get rid of layer number one. And what I ended up doing here on pose three is I switched up the layer orders a bit, since going from pose two to pose three, the character's left arm and forearm kind of change order, so the boxing gloves goes behind the shoulder, I suppose. So I uh, had to change the order around a bit, but not much of a difference otherwise. And now I'm just going to copy these 
first frames and put them into the end of our animation. So we can have a return to neutral. Okay, and there we go, the whole animation is done. Now it's still a very simple frame by frame animation, there's no tweening, but let's see how it looks in the playback. Uh, yeah, I'm not a boxer, but I would say that's a pretty good punch. Maybe the anticipation could be slightly longer and the punching pose slightly, the extended arm pose slightly shorter. So I'm just going to add a few frames here into the anticipation. Two frames inserted there. And let's take two frames away from the extended punch pose. Right. And we have now 50 frames in total so the whole punch doesn't quite last a full second but close let's see it again yeah i would say that is all right so next phase is applying the tweens so we are going to use these 60 frames per second to create a much more fluid movement than this and I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, so now I have applied a tween to the first pose and the idea is to make a kind of a bridge the gap between pose number one and pose two. So I'm individually I've moved all the body parts to a new location here at frame 19 and trying to get as close to the new pose as possible. So here we see the comparison where the tween of the first pose ends and the second pose starts. I'd say that's pretty close. The pants are making a slight jump there, so I might adjust that. All right, that's better. So this is going to add a lot of fluidity and life into our little animation. And if we play this back now, you can see what's going on. So all the in-between frames there and the tweening it makes a huge difference. So I'm going to continue the same thing over to pose 2 and pose 3. Let's see how it goes.
let's check out what's happening here. Now I added one more kind of an in-between pose here into the anticipation. So transferring from pose number one to pose two, I decided he should still go a little bit further into the anticipation pose, just to exaggerate the punch a little bit. So there's just a couple of frames here within the anticipation where he goes to full depth and then starts launching into the punch. Now, if you look at the last frame here of pose number two, it's a mess. It's a complete disaster from a drawing point of view. Uh, all the shapes have been completely deformed. Uh, why is the head so big and so on? But what you have to realize is this is going to be visible for a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. So it's completely fine to take this boxing glove, for example, and just stretch it way out if you want to get some like uh, sense of speed and just direction. So don't worry about the individual frames that go by really fast. They can look whatever, but it's going to make a big difference when you see it in motion. So again, the idea is same that I'm approaching the third pose. So here you can see the last extended punch pose and the last frame of the anticipation pose. So I'm trying to bring all the body parts close to the next pose or as close as possible without completely breaking the character. So let's see how that looks in the playback. Yeah, you can definitely tell how fast the anticipation goes. Like, can barely even see it happening. But I think it still makes a big difference being there. Okay, continuing now on to the extended arm pose. And I think I'll do the same thing, so I'll create kind of a, just a few frames, maybe three or two frames ahead. I'll make the true maximum extended punch pose right around here and then from here starts the recovery back to neutral but the first few frames of this pose number three are still going to be extending towards the maximum okay let's do it Okay, with pose 3 tweening done, let's see the result. So, like I said, there's a few frames of extension and then returning back to normal. And this is pretty crazy how well the uh, punching arm works. Like, it's just two separate layers and they fold so nicely together into the neutral. Now, there is a little bit of an issue with the uh, supporting foot, I guess. So. I think the foot that's behind should kind of stay in place, but it's a small detail. Maybe I'll fix it later, maybe not. Let's see how it looks in the playback. Yeah, he kind of looks like he's on ice, like the feet are slipping all over the place, but it's not a big deal. So maybe I'll just leave it. And finally, returning back to the neutral, I'm going to use also some tweening here to create some kind of a, a more fluid transition between these two poses. It's probably going to be just a few frames, maybe even I'll take frames off from the end. 
just need a couple of frames to smooth out the end here. So here we go, one more tween. <laughs> So as you can see it's one, two, three, four frames and it's just a slight thing, arms moving slightly, the legs once again sliding around like it's on ice. Uh, but yeah, returning to the neutral has a slight transition and it, that's gonna work wonders. So once more let's play it back, how it looks very fluid indeed. Just remember this is three hand-drawn frames, that's all, and the rest is just in betweening. Now there is a way to still improve this and that is with the easing. So let's adjust some of the curves. I'll just start here from the first pose going into the anticipation and I'll just I'll adjust the uh, curves a little bit to match the movement. Okay, I ended up moving a couple of frames around, making the uh, Anticipation just two frames uh, longer, and I applied a simple ease to all of these betweens. So let's see, for example, the extended punch. I want him to spend a fair amount of time here before he starts uh, reeling back to the neutral. So let's see how I adjust it. The curve, it's like this, so quite a long period of time of nothing happening, and then accelerating towards the next pose. And also to go along with that, the next pose, since the previous one ends up with a high speed acceleration, the next tween also starts with a high acceleration and then slows down towards the end. Now of course this one is just a couple of frames so it's barely even noticeable but it's good practice to do it anyway. So with that I think the whole thing is pretty much done except for one last little trick, but let's see the playback once more. So it's definitely more dynamic looking, but somehow it got slightly slower or something. It's not quite as snappy as before. So let me try and fix that with just a little bit of a timing adjustment. So I'd say the uh, transition between pose 1 and 2 should be slightly shorter and so on. A few adjustments. Alright, adjustments have been made. I took a few frames from in between here, just removed them so this transition is a lot faster now by a few frames and also this squatting is slightly more fast and dynamic so let's see how it looks and I'm pretty happy with that now the final thing is I'm going to apply some effects to this animation and to do that I'm going to create a symbol out of it so right now it's just a bunch of layers on the main view, so I'm going to copy all of these and create a new symbol out of them. Now the library is full of tweens, don't worry about those. And there we go, the layers have been copied into a symbol, symbol 1. So now I can delete this from the main view, shouldn't be a problem. And if I just drop symbol 1 onto the stage, 
that's going to include the entire punching animation in a one neat little package. And just to make sure, let's play it back and see. Yep, there we go still. And now since it's a symbol, I am free to add some effects. Now, what I like to do is add a drop shadow as a sort of a stroke kind of effect. For some reason stroke doesn't exist in animate, but I found a way to kind of uh, replicate it with drop shadow. Just by maxing out the strength to make it really solid and the distance goes to zero. And as you can see it's already resembling something of a stroke. I'll just adjust it a bit and there we go. Now the outline is slightly thicker. I think it gives it a nice nice look. Uh, another thing is a bevel. So we are able to create some kind of uh, automated shadows and highlights as well. So let's look at the settings here. Just turning it around a bit. And I'm going to set the blur to zero so that we have a nice border. And the strength, if it's something like 25, should give us a nice shadow and a nice highlight. Just the distance. I'd say we're done. We have a kind of a simulated light source, I suppose, and a shadowy part. And that's going to make the whole thing look a little bit more advanced and a, a 3D possibly, it looks a slightly 3D. Now one last thing, I'm gonna do a neat little trick to make it pop a bit more, is give a shadow for him on the, on the floor. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, same symbol, same action, same animation, and just resize it a bit, drop it down to the floor level, and of course put it behind the main layer. And what I'm going to do now is remove the extra effects, and hit it with an advanced color effect. So this allows me to, first of all, drop the brightness down to zero to get the black shadow. And then the alpha, which is the transparency, maybe I'll put it 25 or something. And that should be a dynamic shadow. Let's see how it looks. All right. And I guess that concludes the live demonstration. Now it's a very simplified animation. If I spent more time on it, I could make the different body parts move in a more like a staggered way. So not every frame changes at the same time. And I could add some like secondary actions or overlapping actions. If I gave him hair, the hair would be moving beautifully throughout this whole movement. But right now it's very simplified, but Hopefully you got the idea and hopefully you find this simple enough to try it out for yourself. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching.